zero. So if this battery is four, then there's going to be eight left. If this, sorry, if this battery, if this voltage uh, device, if this whatever unknown device is four, you lose four, you get eight. If this device is two, you lose two, you get six. If this device better be six, so you get zero. Yes? When the run starts, does it always have like a number and then it ends with zero? Or can it be like, start with the number? Okay. Yes, it, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Um, Wait, you could go 12 to zero, it could be negative seven to positive five. Oh, okay. It could be to positive 24 to negative 24, or to positive 24 to positive 12. It's always potential difference. Um, fun fact, <coughs> your, uh, your computer power supply has four rails in it, and the rails produce plus five and plus 12 volts. So everything in your computer uses plus five or plus 12 volts. So when you plug in a fan, if you, and then a ground, which is zero. So ground is zero. You're like plus five, plus 12, and then ground. If you connect a lead, you connect a, a computer fan from the five to the ground, you get plus five and the fan goes. If you connect a 12 to a ground, you get plus 12 and the fan goes whoosh. But you can also connect the five to the 12 and you get plus seven and the fan goes. Isn't that interesting? So it's all about the difference. If you go 12, 12 to zero, you're gonna get 12. If you go five to zero, you're gonna get five. But if you go five to 12, you're gonna get seven. That's how, that's how those work. Okay. So that's rule number one. Okay. Any other questions? Somebody wake Emily up. I know this is boring stuff, but it might save your life someday. <laughs> Rule number two. Current in is current out. You can't lose electrons. So whatever current you got in, you gotta have current coming out. You can't lose your electrons. If you got one amp leaving the battery, you better have one amp coming back to the battery. If you got a billion electrons every second leaving, you better have a billion of electrons every second coming back. Again, just these are just laws and how electricity works, and we have to name them after somebody, so we name them after somebody. <coughs> So if this, uh, if if there's two amps leaving the battery, going that way, there better be two amps coming back. And if there's two amps going into this device, how much is coming out? Two. If there's two going into this device, how much is coming out? Two. What's the current right here? Two. What's the current right here? What's the current right here? What's the current right here? It's, it's everywhere in a series circuit is too. Cool? Give me a thumbs up if this is making sense to you. All right. Let's look at uh, resistance in a series circuit. Resistance of a series circuit is cumulative. Each resistor slows down the current. So the more resistors you have, the more slowish the current be. Equivalent resistance. I don't have a diagram anymore, but you have one on your paper. If you assign a resistance to each of your devices, the total resistance at the battery is the sum of the resistances of each individual device. If you have a, if you have three four ohm resistors, the battery is going to see 12 ohms. And again, by extension, if you like formulas, voltage total is E1 plus E2 plus E3. This is uh, just Kirk Cross rule number one. Rub 
wrote some algebra on it. That means that current has to be constant. Through cross rule number one, through cross rule number two. Series circuits. Do so you know what's coming up? No. Examples. Okay. So consider the series circuit here. Forty-five volts. You have two resistors: a five-ohm resistor and a ten-ohm resistor. Using Ohm's law, at least the mathematical representation of Ohm's law, uh, you can determine what the current is. V1. And B2 are going to display a value, a voltage one, voltage two, and A is going to display a value. Who knows, first of all, what RT is at the battery? 15. So the resistance of the battery is 15 ohms. And I'm going to try to, for the next two weeks, use different colors to represent different things. Um, we're going to use red to represent resistance. And you can do this with colored pencils if you want, if you understand that some teachers don't like you to use colored pencils. And I can't remember if you can use them on the AP or not. I don't think you can use them on the AP. Um, where blue is going to represent voltage, <coughs> and green is going to represent current, and black is going to be representing values that we already have. Okay. So we're going to write save. We're going to save this. Save. If you want to get colored pencils, you're welcome to. Um, we're going to do examples pretty much for the next couple weeks. OK, so we got 15 <laughs> ohms of resistance. What is the current at the uh, in the wire? Who can figure that, uh, figure that out? 33. 33. Everywhere in the wire. 3 amps, yeah. The current is going to be 3 amps because the voltage is 45 volts of the battery. The battery is seeing 15 ohms, and 45 divided by 15 is usually 3. So voltage, 45. Resistance, 15. 45 divided by 15 gives you 3 amps. So 3 amps of charge are pumping out of that battery. What's the current through this device? Through the R1. It's three. It's three. It's three. Yeah. Oh, wait, three amps. Answer. What's the current through R2? Three. 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 three amps. What's the current right there? Three. What's the current right there? Three. What's the current right there? Three. What's the current over here? No. Yeah. Three. It's, it's three everywhere in the series circuit. So if we know the current coming out of the battery is three amps, we know the current through the entire series path is three amps. Cool? OK. Voltage. What is V1 going to read? V equals IR, there's I, there's R, what is V1 going to read? 15. V1 is going to read 15 volts. V equals IR. Give me a thumbs up if what happened made sense to you. You're like, I can do this kind of algebra. All right, so if you don't understand, backing up a little bit, we got 3 amps because 3 is 45 divided by 15, which means there's 3 amps everywhere in this loop. We connect a voltmeter to find out what it is there and there, and V equals IR. This is I, 3 amps of current, 5 ohms of resistance, 3 times 5 is usually 15. So if that makes sense to you, what is V2 reading? 30. 30 volts. V2 is reading 30 volts. 
Now, do Kirchhoff's law, are Kirchhoff's laws violated? Rule number one, is whatever voltage going out coming back? Yes. Yep. 45 goes out, 15 plus 30 is 45, 45 comes back. Cool? And then the current, is the current the same everywhere? Three amps going that way, three amps, three amps, three amps coming back. Boom. Okay. Give me a thumbs up. Any questions? Question. Uh, the lines next to 45, what do those represent? <coughs> high potential, low potential. So this is the battery. This is the high potential side. This is the low potential side. Okay. And it doesn't need to be multiple lines. You only need one big line and one little line to represent high and low potential. But just to make it, I don't know why some diagrams use multiple lines. Some diagrams use two, four, six. You only need two. You need to say high potential, low potential. The reason that's going to be important is when we get to magnetism, the direction of current flow is going to be important. Okay. We need to know what direction currents flow. And since I talked about it, is current flowing clockwise or counterclockwise? Ask your neighbor. Don't blur it out. Ask your neighbor, is current flowing <coughs> clockwise or is it flowing counterclockwise? We'll take a vote here in a second. <coughs> Conventional current, is it traveling clockwise or counterclockwise? Isn't it wrong? Like, isn't it the railway? It's not the way we do it in the... Correct. Conventional current is the... Right. Conventional current is the flow of positive charge, but you need to understand that positive charges don't move. Protons don't move. Electrons move. But to make things easier to understand, we say conventional current is positive. It's a convention. A convention is just something we accept as you know the case. Conventional current is when the Avengers get hurt, they're healed in like five minutes. They're like, get up, like, I'm good. You just got smashed. How are you good like five minutes later? Anyway, okay, so if you think the conventional current goes clockwise, which is this way, raise your hand. About two thirds of you? Oh, the rest of you? Okay, good. So yeah, it's clockwise. So conventional current runs from the high potential to the low potential, so conventional current in this circuit runs clockwise. That's going to be a big deal when we get to magnetism. Okay. Any other questions or comments or queries or conundrums? No. Okay. Boom. We already did that. Boom. Okay. Burp charts. Yay, burp charts. Okay. Burp charts are devices that are very, very handy. It doesn't matter if your device has, if your circuit has two devices or 30, you can use a burp chart to organize your thoughts. And this is how they work. You write burp across the top, and then you write all the devices starting with the battery along the left side. So go ahead and copy that down. I do recommend you put a comma after Eagle's IR. Or what I usually do is I make this line like extra thick. To show you that there is no, the formula is not verb, it's verb and then. Next, we write, I'm going to use black for known values. We write known values in our verb chart. One of our known values is the battery is 45 volts. Another known value is R is 5 ohms, and uh, R2 is 10 ohms. I think that's all the known values we have. So once we've written the known values, we're going to use Ohm's law to fill out the chart like, like Sudoku. You remember Sudoku? Yeah. It was a big deal about 5, 10, 10 years ago. 80 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 80 years ago. Uh, so Sudoku is one of those games where if you, if you have uh, vertical columns or horizontal columns, you're missing a value, you can fill in the value based on what you have. So that's basically the same thing we're doing. We have a missing value right there. And we realize that R1 and R2 are in series, so R at the battery 
should be what? 15 ohms. So we write 15 ohms in. I'm going to write it in red because I'm just like that. Like different colors. Yep. And now you realize, again, okay, the power column, the power column we're leaving for the very end. We leave the power column for the very end. Okay. Which is why it's, it's kind of separate, but it's important. It's very important. Okay. So we have, we have a gap right there. We use the equals IR to re realize that I is what? Three amps. I is three amps. That's cool. Now there's no more gaps, so I guess we're stuck. We're not stuck. We realize that in a series circuit, what is going to be the same? Three amps. R1 is going to be three amps. R2 is going to be three amps. R2! <laughs> and now we have two gaps. Yep, we can realize that R1 is IR, 3 times 5, is 15 volts. And R2, same thing, 30 volts. Yes, question? Okay, so this is like you were celebrating? Yes. Okay, so this should basically parrot what we just had in the previous exercise. But now this is how we check our work. Power. Whatever power is coming out of the battery has to be dis, dis, dis something. Um, dispensed? No, that's not the right word. Has dispersed? To, dispersed? No, that's not, that's not the right word. Yeah. Discharge works, we'll take it. Um, whatever power comes out of the battery has to be discharged, used up, I guess, at, at every one of the devices. So power is IV. P equals IV. Calculate the power for each device and the battery. I can't do it. You can't do 45 times uh, 3. You can always ask Alexa. It's 135. What is 45 times 3? Is it 135? 45 times 3 is 135. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And this one is uh, 45 <laughs> watts. This one's 90 watts. <laughs> so the battery is pumping out 135 watts, and R1's using. I can't remember the actual. I really don't remember what the actual word is. Let's just say using uh, 45 watts, and R2 is using 90 watts. Power is conserved, and if power is conserved, what's also conserved? Energy, exactly. Remember, power is just energy divided by time. A watt is a joule per second. Now, how do you use a device like this? You don't. You do. You totally do. If someone says, how bright is this light? Let's pretend R1 and R2 are not just resistors. Let's say they're actual lights. Which one's brighter? The first one. R2. R2 is brighter. Because in R2, every second, in R2, every second, 90 joules of light energy are being released. In R1, every second, only 45 joules of light energy are being released. Does this make sense? So you can think of the power as energy divided by time. Whichever thing is pumping out more power is going to be the hotter, the faster, the brighter device. If it's a motor, it's moving faster. If it's a light, it's brighter. If it's a toaster element, it's hotter. Does that make sense? Okay. Are we good? Okay. Do you want to call it a day or we'll start parallel circuits? Call it a day. Call it a day. Okay. I think we've learned enough for today, so let's call it a day. We'll do parallel circuits when we uh, finish up the circuit pet sims.